I'm joined today by Corvin Cadelia, who's the founding partner of CCFX. Corvin, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, for perhaps people that haven't heard of CCFX or yourself, could you uh, introduce yourself? So, my background is in theoretical physics, and that was more or less 16 years ago. And that was at the height of the internet stock bubble. And a lot of people, a lot of my friends at different departments, economics departments, maths departments, got involved, bought stock, made money. And I became very fascinated by that. Well, how is it that you can, in this kind of society, capitalist society, go from idea to cash so quickly by implementing some idea that you have? And that really got me going. And so over the last 16 years, I've worked in the financial markets, um, came to the city, 2001. And then the ultimate goal was to end up in a role where I did systematic trading, which was something I always had a passion for. And CCFX was the culmination of that. It was my own fund. Um, currency, intraday trading, fully automated with computers. And we ran that for four years. And then in 2015, at the end of that, we finished, we wrapped up. And I moved on to do my own thing, in particular, trade my own capital, as well as get engaged in teaching. And the primary reason for getting engaged in teaching was to reach out, connect with people. And one thing you tend to find when you run a fund is you sit very much in your own bubble. You meet due diligence people and it's very solitary. So by connecting with people, you tend to find people who are passionate about this. And one of the biggest passions or desires that people tend to have when they join this kind of fray of the markets is a desire to gain control over their lives, to gain some sort of freedom. And all of a sudden you realize that regardless of what subject you choose to immerse yourself in, uh, there's always this desire of accomplishment and mastery. And certainly within trading, the consequence of that mastery is control of your own life. And that has a particular mindset with it. And that kind of mindset is very liberating. And the fantastic thing is, there's a million and one ways of skinning a cat, meaning how do you make money in the markets. And no one single person knows the answer. And so as you connect, you tend to find lots of new ideas, new approaches, which is very informative for yourself. And the markets, which I'm very passionate about in terms of investigating, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal growth process. And so it was a transition from ultimately being a complete novice, going through my apprenticeship in the industry, setting up my fund, and then ultimately feeling that I'd like to do this not as a business, but for myself, and at the same time, connect, create a community around me with people that I can feel related to. Was there a catalyst that made you switch from mathematics and physics to uh, the financial markets? Yes, um, if we wind the clock back, the primary reason for going into theoretical physics was, I think it was the Cold War. During the Cold War, people were very outward looking. They looked into space, they looked to colonize the planets, they had Star Trek, Star Wars. And of course, as a small kid, you're very fascinated by that. And so, what kid doesn't want to become an astronaut? And so, my idea rather than sitting in a rocket was, how do you design the rocket? And so, that was the primary driver of going into theoretical physics. And so, ultimately, I ended up doing string theory. Uh, and it's a very theoretical subject. It's not like if you want to study a black hole, you can just pull a drawer and out pops a black hole and you poke it and prod it. You can't do that. And so the markets are equally intellectually stimulating, but there's an immediate feedback cycle. You have a view, you put the position on, and you see what comes out of it. And that's, I think, part of my personality. I need that kind of feedback rather than uh, getting sucked down a rabbit hole in my own world without any connection to the outside world. And so it, w it was a natural transition. Of course, who wouldn't say that profitability doesn't attract you as well? How good or how bad was your trading when you first started? Absolutely horrendous. I <laughs> did all the initial mistakes. I over leveraged, held on to losers, cut my winners. And it's interesting looking back in terms of understanding my psychology. That psychology hasn't changed, but I've put methods in place to control myself. I mean, interestingly, Jesse Livermore, um, whose autobiography has been fictionalized in reminiscences of a stock operator, said um, his best trading was when he sat on his hands. And that's certainly true. Oh, you, you know you're going to do something wrong, so might as well not be there in the position of being able to do it and just walk away and not do it. And so uh, the secret to improving at anything in life is understanding what are the things that are going to make you fail. And the only way you're going to experience that is by failing. But once you have that laundry list, you can say, okay, so when I'm in this position, I'm just not going to be here to do it. So let's say you overeat, you're obese, and this is a problem our society is affected with. Well, if you know that putting things in your mouth is going to increase your weight, just remove them out of your life, put the fridge away, just, you know, don't be there for that to happen. It's similar with trading. 
When you have a position on, you're sticking to a system and you've analyzed the system, the minute it starts losing, don't be in front of the screen. Do something else. Go for a run. Spend time with your family or read a book, but just don't be there.